Hello, and welcome to Horseshoes, Hot Dogs, and History, addendum number one. And yes, we are filming the addendum before the first video, sue me. Today, we will be looking at the variants of the Colt Single Action Army and the Smith & Wesson Model 3. I decided to put them in their own video simply because, as you can see behind me, we have a lot of variants to go over. These were actually two different mod packs that I made when I first got started modding in H3VR. Uh, I figured, you know, take two existing uh, weapons that are in the game, then change things up like the barrel length, the caliber they fire, and I figured it'd be a pretty simple project to get my feet wet, so to speak. Now, the Colt Single Action Army and the Smith & Wesson Model 3 were two very popular revolvers, which is why we have so many variants to go over. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, we'll start with the Colt Single Action Army. So, this pistol was very popular in America for a very long time. Possibly so because of the advent of Western films, where this little pistol showed up all the time. Now, this is the vanilla version that is in H3VR, and this is what is commonly known as the artillery model with its 5.5 inch barrel and chambered in 45 long colts. Now the artillery name seems to be a bit of a misnomer, uh, but that is the name that stuck with this model. So this is one of the most common variants for both military and civilian ownership, which is why I think this is the representation that is used in the game. The other military version was the Colt Cavalry model. This has a 7.5 inch barrel and this was used by the cavalry. This longer barrel would give it better accuracy, and because cavalry then often had saddle holsters, the uh, extra length wasn't really much of an issue. One of the other very common models that was made at the original run of the Colt Single Action Army was the Quick Draw model. This has a 4.75 inch barrel, which comes just at the ejector rod length right here. Now, this is commonly called the gunfighter model, the quick draw model, the civilian model. Uh, the reason why this was called the gunfighter or quick draw model is because with this shorter barrel, this would be easier to draw out of the holster very quickly. You can see these black grips are actually vulcanized rubber, which was one of the common alternatives to wooden grips. I also made one in 38 Special, which wasn't in the initial production run, but, you know, these 38 caliber uh, revolvers for the Colt were pretty common. They had came in a lot of different chamberings. One of the less common barrel lengths is this 3-inch Sheriff's model, or Storekeeper's model. You can see here that this has no ejector rod on it because the barrel's just too short. And this was commonly used, as you can guess by the name, by storekeepers, bankers, etc. And I decided to give this a chrome and pearl finish because I figured, you know, a wealthy person might want to bling out their little sidearm. With this overall small length, you could easily hide this underneath a drawer, so this would be pretty easy to conceal. During the original production run, less than 2,000 single-action armies were made in 44 rimfire, because even though rimfire was becoming an obsolete cartridge type, there was still a lot of it around. So Colt decided to make these revolvers for that surplus ammunition. Uh, it, otherwise, it's not very different from the baseline model. It should be noted that after the original 2000 or so, they did not make any more in 44 rimfire. Now one chambering that was very popular for a long time is this, the Colt Frontier 6 shooter, chambered in 4440 Winchester which is the same cartridge that the Winchester 1873 rifle was chambered in. So this would often be used as a companion piece to that rifle because you could just carry the same ammunition for both weapons, which made this a very convenient revolver to carry on your person. Now this is a very interesting model. This is the Colt Bisley. This is named after the Bisley firing range in England, which was a 
popular place for target shooters. So as you can see, the overall shape and profile of this revolver is different. The trigger is wider, the grip is angled differently, the hammer is wider to make it easier to grab. And because this was made for Bisley, this is chambered in a British cartridge. I gave this one 455 Webley because that's the closest thing we have to 455 Ellie, which was a popular British caliber at the time. I decided to add two modern variants of the Colt Single Action Army in this just because I could, and this demonstrates how this remained very popular today. So this is a Colt Cowboy, which I believe was made in the 90s. So I chambered this in 357 Magnum to give it, you know, a bit extra oomph for a modern cartridge. One other notable feature of the Colt Cowboy is that... It has a drop safety! So that's a very convenient safety feature. The other modern variant I made is the Rough Rider. This is chambered in 22 long rifle. This makes a nice little target shooter. Has a bit of a punch to it, as you can tell. And I gave this synthetic grips just so that you can tell that this is, in fact, a modern pistol. Now, here we got something interesting. This is what is known as a Colt Buntline Special. This is a 12-inch barrel right here. Now, the origin of this pistol is a bit of a mystery. It gets its name, the Buntline Special, from the dime store novelist Ned Buntline, who wrote a whole bunch of stories about white Earp, which probably are untrue, or just heavily embellished. He claims that at the gunfight at OK Corral, white Earp carried a Colt Single Action Army with a barrel of this length or similar. Now, while this is not a common configuration of the Colt Single Action Army, you could get a long barrel on custom order. This was usually paired with a pistol stock that would attach in the rear and would be used as kind of an impromptu revolver rifle. Still, this is an incredibly goofy piece of work and very likely what inspired the song Big Iron. Our final Colt variant is this Colt Cattleman. This is actually more of an Uberti reproduction than an authentic time period piece, because while Colt did make a revolver carbine, that was the Colt 1855 before the single action army, and that was never converted into a centerfire cartridge. That was a percussion rifle. Now, one thing to note is that revolver carbines never really caught on, and the one of the reasons for that was. A common complaint about revolvers is that because there is a tiny gap right here in the cylinder between the cylinder and the barrel, is that gas would come out forward. So if you're trying to hold the rifle like this in front of the cylinder, your hand would get burned. That's why one of the solutions here was you see this little trigger spur coming off of the trigger guard. So instead of your forward hand holding the barrel like this, you would instead kind of use the trigger guard as a foregrip, and this little spur right here gives you a little extra length to grip the trigger guard. So you'd be holding it a bit like this. Now let's move on to the Smith & Wesson Model 3. Now, the version that's in the game is the Showfield model, which is probably one of the better known variants. This variant was requested by U.S. Army Major Showfield. The one key feature that distinguishes this from other Model 3s is the latching mechanism. You can see here that it is actually attached to the frame and not to the barrel, as is the case with other Model 3s. So this is a little bit stronger. and. This was originally chambered in 45 Showfield, which is a little bit underpowered compared to the 45 Long Colt. And because this was the only pistol that ever used 45 Showfield, it was never very popular. So between the ammo not being as strong and not being as common, the 45 Showfield never really stuck around. What's interesting is that a lot of surplus Showfield revolvers had their barrels cut down and were distributed by Wells Fargo, which was originally a stagecoach company. Wells Fargo had a habit of 
issuing special firearms like short-barreled shotguns and these short-barreled Schofield revolvers to their stagecoach crews. And this has been very popular in the collector's market. As you can see with this tiny, tiny barrel, this was a very handy thing to have when you needed something nice and portable. Now, compared to the Colt Single Action Army, which was really only hugely popular in the USA, the Schofield was very popular internationally, and a lot of different variants were made for or by a lot of different countries. So we will start with this, the Australian model. So we have longer barrel, and this was usually equipped with a stock as well. This was ordered by the Australian Mounted Police as a sort of revolver carbine. So sort of like the bunt line, you have kind of a handgun with an extra long barrel that was meant to be used with a stock so that, you know, it can be a pistol or a rifle depending on whether what you needed. Uh, I don't think this really would have helped against the emus though. <laughs> Another country that requested Model 3s was the Ottoman Empire, and much like with the Colt, this one was chambered in 44 Henry Rimfire because they had a lot of 44 Rimfire because they really loved their Henry rifles. So this was the intended companion pistol for their Henry rifles, and much like with the Colt, 44 Henry Rimfire was kind of becoming obsolete so no one else really was using it didn't stick around for much long after so yeah kind of an interesting novelty by far the most common variant of the smith and wesson model 3 was the russian variant and this is where things start to go wrong for smith and wesson you see, even though Smith & Wesson had a very lucrative contract with the Russian Empire to produce their own Model 3s, and even though they developed a superior cartridge for it, the 44 Russian, which was internally lubricated and became the standard for all other Model 3s going forward, Smith & Wesson kinda got screwed over as the Russian Empire basically decided to reverse engineer it and produce it domestically. A similar thing happened in Spain where they came up with their own bootleg Smith & Wesson that ended up being called the Smith & Wesson Model 7. Now, this is the Italian version that was made for the Italian army, manufactured by the Spanish, and I decided to give this a chrome and pearl finish as well because I figured Italians, they also like their bling. Now, here's an interesting thing. So, Britain did eventually get their own version of the Model 3, even though they already had their own version of this, the Webley Revolver, which was double action, not single action. However, thanks to World War I, there was a huge shortage of every kind of weapon, including pistols. So, the British Army put out a contract for basically just about any kind of weapon they could get their hands on. And for sidearms, they turned to the Spanish bootleggers and put a contract out for what they called the old pattern pistol. Because by this time, this was basically obsolete technology, but they would take what they could get. The interesting thing about the old pattern pistol is that every single manufacturer got its own mark and number because a lot of the production runs were not interchangeable with each other. Now, here's an interesting piece. It looks like a Model 3, but it's actually a standalone model. This is the first model double action revolver. So, yeah, double action. You can tell this apart from the other Model 3s because you can see that there are these little grooves on the cylinder, and this trigger has a different shape to it. But otherwise, the uh, rest of the mechanisms are pretty similar to all the other Model 3s. The last piece that we'll be looking at is this very rare Smith & Wesson Model 320. Now, remember what I said about revolver carbines being not very popular because with the gas seal, you would get your forward hand sprayed by gas. This solves that issue in much the same way that the Russian Nagant revolver did. This uses specialized necked-up ammunition that forms a perfect gas seal 
between the cylinder and the barrel, so that you get no gas escaping, and you can safely use it with both hands, like so. And it would come equipped with this pistol stock. This is the Smith & Wesson pistol stock that would be issued with the Model 3 if you ordered one, and would attach here with this little thumb screw here. It wouldn't normally be as ornate as this, but this is what the model came with, and I kind of like it. Now, you may be wondering, why is this so rare if this solved the issue with the gas seal? The thing is, this special ammunition was proprietary, and you had to special order these rifles, so ammo was kind of hard to get a hold of, and that makes these kind of not worth getting. Okay, that about does it, so I hope to see you again soon. Later, Tater!